Can, can you hear me now? <laughs> can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Do you ever feel like that? Do you ever feel like that? The little man on the commercial? Yeah. And you find, try to find the right spot, the right place to stand to eliminate the static because you're confident the reason they can't hear you is the static. Right? Right? We've all had that experience. Yeah. Perhaps this has been your reality as well. <laughs> has that been true for you? Yeah. <laughs> you see, Ed Stetzer tells us that there's a difference between talking and hearing. Sometimes there's a long distance between talking and hearing. And perhaps the question when we're discussing transformational communication is not, can you hear me now? Perhaps the question should be, can they hear him now? Can they hear him? You see, they are hearing all kinds of stuff. They're hearing a lot of stuff. Their world is filled and with clutter and chaos, clamoring for their attention, clamoring for their attention. And amidst all of that, we have been called to be God's vessels of his message, his message of transformation to a hurt and dying world without hope. We have a message of hope. But how on earth do we prepare? How do we strategize? How do we plan so that transformational message can get through? all the junk. Tonight I have a suggestion for you that perhaps there are three things that we can do in our preparation to help us prepare better for transformational communication. What are some prerequisites to our transformational communication? The first one is we need to hear him. If we want them to hear him now, we have to hear him now. Deuteronomy 6 says that these words are supposed to be upon your heart. And the scripture says that we are supposed to meditate on his word. Is his word in your heart? Is his word in your mind? And does your life, is your life so lived that it is clear and evident that his word is in your heart and in your mind? And does your preparation for transformational communication, does your preparation include time spent listening for him? Does the preparation include preparing yourself to hear what he has to say? Reception. You see, we can't give away what we haven't received. And you can... You can have all kinds of knowledge. You can have int incredible skill in presentation. And you might sound amazing and quite impressive. But if you don't own it, you cannot give it away. <coughs> you cannot give it away. You have to hear him so that they can hear him. You have to know him. And you have to know his people. Do you know what they look like? Or are they anonymous to you? And do you know their story? Do you know their story? We each carry with us a story, don't we? And you, you realize that we hear through a filter. And our filter is built by our experiences. And so our story determines what we hear and how we hear it. You got to know their story. If you want to prepare communication that truly transforms, that doesn't just inform, but transforms, you need to know who they are. You need to know their story. And you need to know where they are. Where are they at? Where on earth are they at? Where are they at? Where are they at developmentally? Where are they at developmentally? How has their mind been formed? What kind of past knowledge have they accumulated and accommodated so that now when they hear the words, they understand what you're saying? How has their mind been formed developmentally? How are they generationally? 
Dr. Fasula showed us the differences in the generations, enormous differences in the generations. I'll give you an example. One phrase, just one phrase. If my grandmother was here, wonderful old German, in every stretch of the imagination, big old German woman. <laughs> if she was here and we used the term airbag, she would get a very specific picture in her mind. But if I said the phrase to my 17-year-old daughter, airbag, it would be a completely different picture in her mind. Right? right. Different generations hear things differently. Right. Why? Because they've had different experiences. They've had different images in their past. They've had different moments in their past. Their stories are different. And their experiences impact what they hear and how they hear it. Who are they? Where are they? And what is their culture? Where are they living? You know, our contexts are situated in the middle of a community. And all of our communities are incredibly diverse culturally. Aren't they? Even the ones that look alike, talk alike, and dress alike are incredibly diverse culturally. And if we don't know where they are, what is their culture inside their home like? What is their culture in their workplace, in their school? What is that like? If we don't have an idea where they are, how on earth are we going to provide transformational communication that they can truly hear? Where are they? What do they want? What do these people want? What on earth made them walk in that door? And more importantly, what makes them walk in it again and again and again? <laughs> Do you know what they want? In this room, there are a variety of things that you want, why you came tonight. Perhaps some of you heard, oh, I hear they're offering supper. <laughs> Heavy hors d'oeuvres, free meal. And, and you are willing to leave at any moment, if that was the motivation that got you here, because you have been satisfied. <laughs> some of you might have been curious. You're curious, what is that building like? I wonder what Dr. Fasua is like. <laughs> Perhaps you were curious, and your curiosity has been cured. Perhaps you were interested in a little bit more information and knowledge. You saw the names on the form. You saw the topics, and you say, hmm, I wouldn't mind hearing about that. You came for information, and perhaps some of you came for inspiration. You say, I am tired, and I am exhausted, and I am thirsty. And I need a little bit of inspiration myself. Perhaps, Lord, this will be a place. And I pray that tonight you do get a little bit of inspiration. But where are your people at? And what do they want? Why do they keep showing up? What do they want? Do you know? And then what do they need? What do they need? You see, what they want and what they need might not be the same thing. Right? Might not be the same. They might not have any idea what they need. They might not have any idea. You know, we discover what they want by listening with our ears. We discover what they need by listening with our hearts. What do they need? What does the Lord want for your people? What is the Lord's vision for your people? Does he want to expand their boundaries? Does he want to fill them anew and afresh with his powerful presence? Does he want to release them to serve? What does the Lord want? What is the Lord's vision for your people? Do you know what he has for them? And with the power of the Holy Spirit, do you know how you're going to get them from where they are to where the Lord wants them to be? And how on earth does this message that you're preparing, this single message, move them forward in the direction to where the Lord wants them to go? Transformational communication. You need to know him, and you need to know them. See, there's a big difference between informational communication and transformational communication. Amen. Informational communication focuses on the sender, and the content. Transformational communication focuses on the receiver and the destination. Transformational communication. We need to know his people. 
And finally, the last thing, we need to understand that the loudest form of communication has no sound. No sound. Tom and Joni Schultz in their book, Why Is Nobody Going to Church Anymore?, suggests that we need to invest 55% of our energy in how things look because it's the look and the sound that get the content off the ground. The look and the sound that get the content off the ground. Why? Because environment shapes how people perceive and receive information. What do your people see? What do your people see? What they're seeing impacts what they're hearing. What do they see with their eyes? What do we fill our spaces with? Our furniture and our stuff and our things on the wall and our images and our decoration and the people we use. And when we use them and how we use them and where we use them. And what do we not have in our spaces? You see, what's not present sometimes speaks louder than what is. Who is not being used? Who is not up front? Who is not visible? What is not present? What they see impacts what they hear, and it speaks loudly. Transformational communication understands that we've got to hear him. We've got to know our people. And we got to realize that how we carry the message matters. Transformational communication. Thank you.